disconnects. AKA screw holder. <laughs> the short screws like this. That's what's held the cabinet together. The longer screws are for the hood. I'm going to pull up my pants so you don't get butt crack. You can thank me later. So far so good, right? Put the top back on. Zoom in. Careful the condenser fan wires. Longer screws. There's that, there we go. You can tell I got the camera screen flipped around. Anybody want to screw? Get your mind out of girl. I'm talking about these. Right here. Let's put it back together. Right? What's left to do? Check the charge, right? Let me show you a cool little tool right quick. You see this bad boy? Key refrigeration is nice to me, so I'll throw a little plug into key refrigeration. It is the Diversitec compressor tote. Da da da. You see this bad boy here? This is the heavy part of the air conditioner. See how it locks in right there? Unbolt it, unsweat it, or cut it. Hook it on there, you now have a handle to lift the compressor. Life gets real easy with that. I never have a time to show students in class. We're at my house here. That's why it don't matter too much the capacitor. We're on my house. Pressure switch. It has a safety. Higher end equipment has a safety. So, I've shown you the compressor handle. More tool talk. My students, I tell you, low pressure gauges are handy on lower pressure refrigerants. This is why. If you look at my suction gauge, this is an R502, an R22, R12 manifold set. This manifold set's probably uh, older than some of you students. <laughs> Just kidding, it's not that old. See how it retards where? At what 120 psig it only goes to 500 here notice on the lower pressure portion notice it has in between increments so you get a more accurate reading and stuff on here that's why low pressure gauges on before I fire it up I don't want to forget this what's that say important startup charging instructions liquid line pressure charging method Superheat charging method, flow check systems only. You see this? You'll, you'll see it after I, I steady the camera, I know, I know. So, this is a charging chart, one type of charging chart. When you look at it, outdoor ambient temperature, what is the temperature outside? You take that temperature here at the condenser air inlet, that's what I do, right? Then, waiting for camera to focus, waiting for camera to focus, you can do it camera, 
vapor pressure at service valve, the large one, that's your suction line. So 52, 54, 60, 62, all that stuff. Vapor line temperature at compressor. So compare ambient to your suction pressure. What's your suction line temperature? If it is, let's say, 85 and we go to a 62, you're looking for what? Hold on, I have to look through the camera screen. 85 to 62, what's that? 53? You want a 53 degree suction line. You got 53 degree suction line? By manufacturer's chart, it's working correctly. This applies to Ream. Ream does things a little different. Don't forget, we have to put the disconnect in. No power, it no worky. Alright, give it a call for cooling. Which means you set the system to cool, turn the temperature way down. If the temperature in the room, like it was here, was 74 in the house, put it to like 68. You just want to make sure it doesn't cycle off. We're going to hook up our gauges, let it run, and check things out. Let me get my anti butt crack device going. Ooh, should be about 70 in here. Pressure temperature relationship. My gauge says 70 degrees for our double deuce at this temperature. Or this pressure, which means should be 70 degrees. You gotta be careful with the spiders. Purge the hoses. What happened? Ready? If everything's good, it's gonna work. If not, I blow up and die right here, and you guys get to witness it on YouTube. Startup amps hit about eight, which is good. If you look on here, maybe RLA 13.5, which means 95 degree ambient, 75 degrees inside with a proper charge, it'll run at that amperage. Now it's the hurry up and wait game. You want to let it run for 10 minutes. Remember, I said. 10 minutes roughly until everything stabilizes and you know what's going on, on the, with the refrigeration side. We'll take a voltage check. Two forty-three. If you want to get grilled good, Ohm's law. We got two hundred forty-three volts. If you can get an amp draw of the whole unit, what it's doing, what volt times amps, wattage, that's how much you can calculate. Divide the wattage by 1,000 to get the kilowatts. Find out what the utility rate costs you in your area. They'll tell you how much it will take cost you to run this bad boy in the summer. Not only am I too sexy for my own good, I guess I'm too smart too, right? That, that's a joke, you can laugh. Probably wondering what have I got in my hand here? This is a high dollar temperature clamp. Back before everybody had them. Cost me like a hundred something dollars. But this thing is good. You can look at it. 
inch and an eighth or inch and a half I think it go to down to quarter inch line that's why I bought it it'll actually fit on the three eighths fits on the suction lines it goes up to inch and an eighth when you have those special situations oh yeah all right we ran this bad boy for a little while so far everything's checking out we'll show you a few things all right 59 degree suction line I'll see if we kind of see this bad boy here. We're showing what? About 65 PSI on the low side. When we go on our charging chart, we had a 73. So there you have 70, 75. We'll go with a 70. We said 65, 64, 63. We want about... 60 something degrees for a suction line. Fifty nine, fifty eight to just change. It was hovering that sixty, sixty one. Not too bad. But what we saw for what we have, it's been working. I wouldn't mess with this thing too too much and call it good.